Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday, June 30th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We're watching two waves today. We mentioned this one the last time we made a video back when it was over here in the Eastern Atlantic. It has come all the way across, and this is Invest 95L now moving over the Windward Islands today, bringing rain and gusty winds. Development chances of this one have gone way down as it has been unable to generate westerly winds on the south side and close off a circulation, and it remains just an open wave in here that is likely to stay open as it moves off into the Caribbean, and we're no longer expecting any chances for development of this one. But the wave behind it, Invest 97L, is looking a lot healthier. This has a, a good shape to it here. You can see the rotation on the satellite picture from the bird's eye view. And this is coming right toward the Windward Islands as well and will arrive sometime on Friday, likely very close to Barbados and then into the Windward Island chain. And this one has a much better chance to develop. It's very close to a tropical depression already. This is the zoomed in floater loop on visible. And you can see the rotation right in here showing up well in the mid-levels. Where exactly the low-level center is, is still hard to see, and it is likely still a little bit elongated. If we start to assess the surface wind direction, we'll see a good southwesterly monsoon surge on the southeast side. And this is currently wrapping around, and you can see the northeasterly trade winds here on the north side. What we're missing is the connection around from the northwest on this side because if you assess the wind direction right about here it's still out of the northeast so we have all this northeasterly wind southwesterly wind and just really waiting for it to do this connection on the south side uh, so that we have a well-defined closed circulation this is the ASCAT pass from about three hours before this recording, kind of showing this here with the, the southwesterlies again wrapping around, strong northeasterlies, and then again kind of an elongation here on the southwestern side, but this definitely has the look of something that is now wrapping around, and this trough is now very meridional in orientation, this kink in the wind flow, and so this is likely to pinch off into a closed circulation in fairly short order here, likely either today or tomorrow, and at that point uh, we will likely have ourselves a tropical depression or storm. It's very easy for these things to get gale force winds on the north side as they move westward with the trade winds, and this could even skip tropical depression status if it has 40 mile per hour winds at the time of classification. Uh, that's a, a very common theme with waves like this. Now it's worth noting that this is a pretty rare thing to have at this time of year. It's still June, it'll be July tomorrow, but it's very early in the year for a wave like this to be developing. One of the reasons that we have this going on is there's not a huge shearing flow out ahead of it. Typically this time of year we have a big upper level trough called the Tut that brings southwesterly wind over this part of the Atlantic, which typically will shear apart any kind of system trying to approach the Lesser Antilles. But at the current moment here in the water vapor satellite imagery, that Tut is way up here, well removed from the region, and we have broad upper level easterly flow over top of this, and then southwesterly flow uh, moving out of the, the Leeward Islands. And so this is a lower shear type of scenario than is typical for this time of year. And this will likely allow the system to get better organized than we would normally expect. Uh, the only real negative factors at play here are the fast trade winds out ahead of it. For example, this wave 95L has failed to develop precisely because it's moving very uh, quickly to the west and it's making it difficult to form westerly winds on the south side. And uh, that will be true for this wave to an extent. As it nears the islands, those fast trade winds could make it difficult to maintain an organized circulation and could lead to some wind shear, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, there is some dry air, as there normally is, to the northwest as well. You can see that dark patch of gray here indicating the dry air. But if we really drill down on it, you'll see that the boundary between the moist pocket of the wave and the dry air mass is outlined right about here. And our wave is trying to form a closed circulation right here, which is in the middle of the moist pocket, still got some distance there between itself and the dry air mass. And so it's not looking like the dry air will wrap into this forming circulation in the near future. Give it a couple days and perhaps some will wrap in, but it's unlikely to prevent formation at this point of a tropical storm. So this is going to continue heading west-northwest, and this kind of trajectory will likely, likely take it not very far from Barbados here on Friday. So we are likely to see some kind of tropical cyclone impact here and then in the windward islands thereafter as this enters the eastern Caribbean. 
If we look at the GFS here, the 6C run, this is the surface wind forecast for Thursday evening going into overnight Friday. You can see that a storm has already developed on the model, and this is the Lesser Antilles here. And this, this approach is very close to Barbados by Friday afternoon. You can see passing very close to the island and then the Windward Islands. And this has been pretty consistent. If you look at the last few runs of this particular model, you'll see that it's been pretty close to this position for the last few runs and has been showing development on all of those runs. And most models agree that something will, will likely form here at this point. GFS is one of the stronger models, um, but it's not, not likely to be super unrealistic as we are seeing development currently in the satellite imagery. And so having a storm that looks like this as it's shown in the model uh, is a pretty likely scenario at this point. And we'll likely have at least a tropical storm here and could even be not far from hurricane strength uh, considering that conditions ahead of it are fairly favorable leading up to the Lesser Antilles for the next couple of days. One thing to keep in mind with storms like this, as usual, the, the fast trade winds mean that the north side is always going to have the strongest wind here. And again, even if it's a weak system, it's very easy to get tropical storm force winds greater than 40 miles per hour on the north side of the circulation. So wherever this passes by, even if it is a pretty weak storm overall, likely to see uh, tropical storm force wind gusts at a minimum as this passes through the islands here in a couple days. Now I do want to show you as this enters uh, the island chain, if we look aloft at the 200 millibar flow pattern on the GFS, we'll see that there's the storm and you have this upper level ridge over the Eastern Caribbean. Again, very atypical for this time of year. Any semblance of an upper level tut is way removed. And so we have this upper level easterly flow. And since we have trade winds that are also out of the east at the lower levels, this is a lower shear pattern than you would typically see for a storm entering the Caribbean, especially at this time of year. But I do want to show you the vertical sounding here over the storm as it's entering the Eastern Caribbean. If you look at the thumbnail here, there's the storm and the, the Lesser Antilles Island chain is right there. And as we look at the vertical profile of wind, you'll see this here on the right. Uh, so just going with height here, you've got your trade winds at the bottom, lower level easterlies, and then you have upper level easterlies like I just showed you. And so yes, lower shear than normal, but there is still shear here as these upper level winds are lighter, weaker than the strong lower level winds, which are about 10 or 20 knots stronger at the bottom of the column. So if you look at the shear values here, we're having max shear values of about 15 to 20 knots in the GFS forecast. And so there may still be shear that could limit the storm's intensity, especially as it approaches and enters the Caribbean. It's very tough this time of year because trade winds are so strong to actually get zero shear. And so we are likely to see a storm that kind of struggles with uh, the atmosphere trying to tilt it over, maybe force in some dry air from the west, something that a storm would typically struggle with early in the season, such as we have here. Uh, but again, it's not enough shear to uh, totally destroy a system entering the Caribbean. Normally, if we had this kind of situation, we'd expect the storm to be dying entirely as it enters the Caribbean. That seems rather unlikely at this point, and we'll likely have some sort of storm here, uh, but it's unlikely to either explode or die entirely, uh, given that we'll have moderate shear as it enters the Caribbean. If we look at the steering pattern here, this is the 500 millibar plot from the GFS. Again, here's the storm approaching Barbados on Friday, and the steering influence is the subtropical ridge to the north like this. You've got high pressure up here to the north, easterly flow steering this west-northwestward into the Caribbean. And what you're gonna see as this uh, moves into the Caribbean is that we have a big upper level trough over the eastern seaboard. And this is kind of setting the edge of the subtropical ridge kind of right here. And so the ridge is weaker as you head out toward the west. And this results in the storm trying to gain some latitude. It's not really trying to go due west here. The only case in which it would likely go due west is if it fell apart or got very weak and then the trade winds just carry the old circulation off toward the west. But if the storm has any kind of strength to it, which at this point seems a little more likely than not, it's likely to be moving slightly north of west. And so this is going to take it rather close to the greater Antilles on most of these model forecasts. And you'll see that on the GFS where it kind of gravitates up toward Hispaniola, Jamaica, and Eastern Cuba as it moves into the Central Caribbean over the weekend. And you can see that the ridge to the north is not very strong at this point. So we don't, again, we don't have anything trying to force it due west toward Central America at this point. So some latitude gain is likely. It's the kind of classic situation where the stronger the storm is, the more it's probably going to move to the north, the weaker it is more toward the west, and you get these fanning out of possible tracks in model guidance, depending on how strong the storm is 
at various points in its life cycle. The GFS Ensemble will give us a pretty decent picture here of what's possible. This is the cloud of possible locations for the storm on Friday morning as it's approaching Barbados. Every red number is a possible location in one of the GFS Ensemble forecasts. And you'll see that this cloud of possible locations uh, keeps getting bigger as we go out in time because uncertainty increases. And by the time we're out to three days here on Saturday, you have a, a, an array of locations in the Eastern Caribbean, some of which are farther north than others and approaching Hispaniola, some of which move south of Hispaniola and uh, move into the area near Jamaica. Some go up near Cuba and then on up into the Bahamas. Again, we get this fanning out here. And uh, at this point, it's hard to narrow down considering we don't have a storm just yet. Exactly where this is going to go, there's always uncertainty. We're out to day five at this particular point, but you can get a reasonable idea of the area we're watching here, general west-northwestward track, that could take it into areas where it's impacting these large islands. And this obviously will mean impacts for these islands in terms of heavy rainfall and winds if we do indeed get a storm here. But it also tells us a lot about the storm's future in that, especially you know this time of year with fast trade winds and whatnot, if a storm gets up into this region, it's likely to get torn up to some extent by the tall islands associated with the Greater Antilles. All three of these islands, Hispaniola, Cuba, and Jamaica, have high terrain. And a storm, especially if it's small and especially if it's weaker, moving through these mountains uh, would likely have a hard time uh, maintaining strength uh, after passing through there. And you can see that a lot of these ensemble members as we go forward don't maintain a lot of intensity. Most of these members weaken or dissipate the storm after passing through the Greater Antilles. And at this point, it's uh, not we're not able to say whether that's actually going to be the evolution or whether this can survive and impact more land areas down the road. Uh, potentially in the Gulf of Mexico or the Bahamas. Just not sure yet. We'll see how it looks when it gets to this point in the Central Caribbean. Right now, conditions look like it will favor a storm at least surviving to that point. And then once we get there, it will depend on how much shear there is and how much interaction with the high terrain there is going forward. And that's what we'll be talking about as we get into next week. But for the moment, we're just watching this approaching the Lesser Antilles, likely to impact Barbados and the rest of the Windward Islands on Friday, and then on into the Central Caribbean where impacts to the Greater Antilles may occur over the weekend and into Monday. And likely to be a storm, we'll probably get our first advisories from the National Hurricane Center within the next 24 hours or so, given current trends on satellite imagery today. And at that point, uh, we'll be able to start talking about impacts in more detail. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.